Welcome back, Toothpick Ted here. And I just got back from Las Vegas and there's a new flavor of craps that's being rolled out uh, across Nevada and California. And it's from Interblock. And so I wanted to create a top five pros and cons list and also do an overview, kind of just explaining the game and the, some of the differences and uh, how do you play it. I mean, I know how craps can be intimidating just in general. So uh, sit back a little bit, enjoy this video, and let me show you the new inner block stadium style live craps. Okay, stadium live craps. Now you might have been to a casino, at least in Nevada, Las Vegas recently, where they're starting to build these stadium uh, pits where they might have uh, a dealer up in the front, a live dealer for roulette, bubble craps, uh, baccarat, something like that. And they have the big screens up behind them. And then in front, you have like, I don't know, several dozen of these little sit down terminals and that all the you know customers can come up and just sit down and play. And you can play any of the different games that are being dealt up at the front, right? So. Same thing, and it's the same company, and it's actually incorporated into their whole scenario of the stadium gambling there. So now they're adding, they already got bubble craps, which they label as auto craps, I believe. But now from Interblock, they added in live craps. Now, what this is doing is bringing an actual table into the pit area. So basically like an eight, foot maybe nine foot it's arguable I, don't, I didn't actually measure it but uh, there's an eight foot tub right and it has one dealer up at the on the side there and he has his terminal display and the shooter will come up one at a time you know you do your role while everybody else is still sitting at their stations shooter comes up and you have to shoot from the end and you have your own betting terminal off to the side too and you basically, you do your shooting and your roll from up there. Everyone else is doing their basic betting from their stations. Pretty straightforward, right? Lots of cool things, that are good and bad about that. Um, so let's go over that list and let me show you some of the highlights of Stadium Live Craps. Now the physical layout, it might be different at different locations, but basically you have uh, the, the pit, the tub, the table, down dead center, right? And you might have a ring of, of the displays around the, the circle outside of the table. All the different players, and then say player here goes up and plays. Now what happens is when he approaches the table, his terminal that he was sitting at now gets switched and mirrored to the display that is at the table. So now he does all your betting at the table and it's just like you were there at your terminal station. There's a message that pops up so no one else can just walk up to your station and take over and cash out or whatever, you know. It, it, it tells you that this station is mirrored. And like any other game, that player is done, returns to his seat, then going around, uh, what, clockwise, like any other game, you go to the next person who wants to shoot and they'll do their thing. They go up, go up to the table, their station gets mirrored and so forth and just keeps going around in circles that way. Now, there's some locations probably, more than just where I was playing, that there's more than just the, say, I was at Planet Hollywood, okay? Las Vegas, Planet Hollywood, they have 12 terminals around the main table. Now, they have more than uh, just the 12 spread across the rest of the stadium area, right? Because those are set up for the other games. You can, from those other stations, you can still play and bet on that cr live craps, which is totally cool. But they can't participate as the shooter. It's only those immediate 12 terminals. In this case, it's 12. Some locations may be different, so the rules may vary. So you want to double check where you're playing, if you'll be able to shoot or not. 
but the ones right around the table, good to go. Little description about the actual physical table. Eight foot, maybe nine. It's normal height, but the depth of the walls, a little bit shorter than a traditional table. Uh, you might have at least 11 inches between the table surface and where your chip rack would normally be on a craps table. It's only, I'm guesstimating, but it, I don't think it's even 10 inches uh, tall. So what that means, it's still gonna be able to, if you're wacky and tossing dice all in weird ways, you're still gonna get dice off. I even witnessed multiple times dice either bounced off, got thrown off just straight, or uh, even because of the shorter distance now, I've, they put a plastic plexiglass at the end, you know, maybe six foot tall, so that people that are throwing too tall, it doesn't go flying, right? So I've seen multiple people hit the back glass and have it drop back. But uh, the walls are shorter, so if it's bouncing around, it might fly off the sides though, um, and still might be an issue. But smaller table, that'll have some effects. Also around the table, you have the two terminals, one for the dealer, and he's or she is entering in the numbers. Then you have another terminal that's mounted permanently at the end, so and the shooter has to shoot from the end, so you're, you gotta go the far distance of that full eight feet. So whether you're just a random roller, just chicken feeding and tossing those dice out there, um, or you're a dice setter, you're gonna have to get used to that short distance. Now the table surface is pretty much like a, an actual traditional table. You know, has the like microfiber covering, uh, some kind of, sounds like wood. The thing is, it's, it falls more on the bounciness of a harder surface. You know, if, you, if you've watched some of the other tables and some of them feel a little more bouncy where your dice might be kind of bouncing off the walls and bouncing up and over a little bit more often. Uh, so it's, it's on the spectrum of a harder surface but it does sound a little bit more hollow. So I don't know if it's just less thickness of their, say wood or whatever. Uh, so it has a different sound to it. But overall, if, you're, if you actually pay attention to your shooting, it's on the harder side. So that may be a good benefit for you if you're a shooter. Okay, just a quick overview of the actual playing display, the terminal that you're, you're betting at. So let's bring that up. So basically, this is almost the exact same type of screen that they use for their bubble craps game. So if you already know how to play bubble craps, whether it's the individual one from Interblock or the other brand, the, the gaming uh, you know, instructions are pretty much the same thing. So you'll be able to just smoothly transition into this style of game, right? So you sit down. Put your money in, put your, get your player's card in, you're all good to go. So, just going around the screen real quick, in case you've, you're not as familiar with the, the game screen, uh, up in the left corner, or you know, up in the top bar, they have the amount of money that you have in the machine and um, some of your basic functions. Basic interactions for you know, what the minimum, right now in Las Vegas, that Planet Hollywood where I was playing and put in whew, over 10 hours just already of just actual playing, but it was $5 minimum when it first started on day one that they, they came out, it was $5. But by the time I was on day five, you know, I, I went in there the, the first day, the third day they're open, the fifth day, that fifth day, they're already up to a uh, $10 minimum. So uh, we'll see where that goes after this, but it's still cheaper than the actual table they had running for table men, so whatever. Anyway, $5 min, $10,000 maximum. At the bottom, they have all the different chip denominations. You can select your different values and then press any of the bets on the screen and it'll place that value chip there multiple times. If you press it, it'll just keep adding to it. Um, there's a button, this is important, there's a button in the middle where it says set bets off or set bets on that's a good one to know if you start to struggle and you, you panic and the timer's running and you don't want the bets there and you forget to just drag them off to remove the bets you can hit you know set bets off and that'll 
turn everything off, turn everything off that's not a contract bet. And that might save your butt on a roll that you didn't want to bet. So there you go. Like always, in the corner, the the worst sucker bet ever, the big six and eight. Uh, on a real table, it's a sucker bet. On bubble craps or on this live craps version, it's an insane, insane bet because you have the exact same bet if you place a six or eight, which would pay you $7 for every $6 that you bet. Where the big six and eight is just even money. It, it'll, for every five, you get five. It's like, what the, it, it's, it's not even, it's not even a foot away on the screen difference, but it's, it's glitter and in your face. So never bet that corner big six or big eight, never. Up in the top left, you'll see the timer and that's where it'll count down for how much more time you have for betting. Um, and if you're shooting, you can you have to watch that you won't get the dice till that comes out also across the top you have the camera view which is really cool because the table has multiple camera angles uh there's a camera built into the back wall kind of like world series of poker type thing you know kind of cool view and so that has the shooter on that angle and then there's also an overhead camera coming down so you see the whole table surface there both those views are live on everybody's terminal, as well as displayed on the huge screen in the front of the stadium. So anybody walking around in the casino area right there, they will see you shooting live. They can look up and see what you're doing live. Fortunately, or unfortunately, they won't see what your bets are, but they will also see at the bottom of the screen, you know, how if you're on a big streak they'll see all your rolls just like some of those other like the bubble craps and uh some other games they'll show you the history like in roulette show you your your shooting history of the, the last 20 or so rolls right now in the bottom right corner there's a roll button now i think this might come this is my own thing but i think that might come in a future software version um where maybe that's where if you want to sh be a shooter coming up, you push it and it's kind of like the lights, you know, waving the hand, I want to be a shooter when it comes around. Currently, the dealer has to go, okay, if this person was just shooting, it goes to the next person, do you want to shoot? No, 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 do you want to shoot? And then they'll, they'll access your terminal there and you have to, you get the formal, do you want to be the shooter? Yes or no, and you hit it, hit yes, then you get up and walk over and the screen's mirror, blah, blah, blah. But that button in the corner will probably be how, you know, each of the players will be able to wave. It's funny because I was up shooting my turn and the dealer, being the first day, a lot of weird things were happening. Dealers were still learning. The trainer from Interblock was even there. So it was kind of cool. But the light, like on the, the dealer's terminal, they have all the seating positions, right? And so if you, there was somebody that kept just hitting that roll button. And so on the dealer's screens, I'll boop, 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 boop. And it's like, okay, we get it. You want to shoot? I'll boop, 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 boop. Dealers, what the hell? It's like, okay, calm down. You're just being a distraction anyway. But anyway, I think the roll button will be used uh, in a future version to be able to pick who wants to eventually, when it comes around to be your turn, you get to be the shooter. Okay. In the top right corner, there is a specialty bet, a side bet, and it's called Lucky Shooter. Now, I'll go into that a little bit more later. Just hang on closer to the end of this clip. Okay, so right now, Planet Hollywood is the only location in, I believe, the whole state of Nevada, but at least in Las Vegas. It's the first location that has this uh, stadium live craps actually running. So... Right now, they're kind of in that infancy state, uh, trial and error. They, they're even running trial software. And so uh, with Planet Hollywood, they started off with, when I, on day one, with $5 minimums, uh, $10,000 max, and two times odds. But like I mentioned before, uh, I think they, depending on the time, just like the regular tables, they bumped it up to $10 minimums. 
I gotta give Interblock a little bit of credit, at least with their audio, uh, the, the, the girl's voice that you hear coming out of the speakers, you know, it's not so mundane. It's a little bit more humorous as well too. So if you seven out or, you know, you throw craps or, you know, it's a new shooter or you lost, there's a little bit more humor involved there. Um, a little bit more bantery kind of, of tone. So it's kind of cool. Uh, not so dry. So that's a good thing, the voices or the, the girl's voice. But I don't know if they do it on purpose, but being an audio guy, um, I kind of tune in on it. Some of the calls, all you can hear from all the different player stations, right? It's all in sync. Um, but then sometimes some of the calls and when they're pushing, you know, trying to get you to play field bets and stuff like that, and they're trying to sell you on more bets, but they kind of space out the synchronization of the audio. So it's almost sounding like delays. It's kind of annoying a little bit, but it's all spaced out. So it gives you more like you're in a huge auditorium kind of feel, but it bounces back and forth between, you know, this echoey kind of vibe and everything all in sync. So I, I don't quite understand that, but whatever it is, what it is, if they did it on purpose to give it a stadium feel like you're in a huge room cause you hear delays, then that's kind of cool. But if they didn't and it just kind of an error, then that's a bummer that it made it past QA. So anyway, it is what it is. Now the physical station that you sit down is almost exactly like a bu their bubble craps uh, station from inner block comfy seat kind of cool perfect setting uh, uh, height compared to the screen it's not like if you're trying to roll a stool up to a real table it's just not even that comfortable comfortable sitting situation cup holders blah blah, blah. and it's funny because you know it was a bubble craps display setup anyway because they got the, the hand padding and then right in the middle where the button used to be or should be it's just like this flat kind of rubber replacement. So it's like, oh, I guess no push the button now kind of thing going. So, but everything else, all the card readers, the display, it's all just like the bubble craps layout. Again, with camera angles, it's kind of cool because you can still see what's going on at the table while you're doing and placing your bets and have it when betting's over and the shooter is now, you know, has the dice, you can have it where your display of what's going on automatically expands almost like three quarter size of the screen. And then now you see in a larger view of what's going on at the table. And until the dice are entered, then it'll zap back down to a smaller version and you're back to your bedding. But it's cool because with all the different camera angles and cameras that are installed on this table, you're able to watch more of the action like even if you're at a real craps table there's so many times where you can't see what the dice are doing you can't see uh what's the number is rolled you can't see if the shooter is a, a klutz or doing their superstitious dropping the dice or if they actually know what the dice are and they set them whatever anyway Everybody has a clean shot, clean view of what's going on. Expand it on the display, you can leave it small, or you can just lift your head, look at the ceiling. They're displayed again all around the room in that area of what's going on. So that's really cool on a whole visual kind of flavor of, of that. From my experiences of you know week one with this new table, they've had some dealers that were getting rotated through, at least the Planet Hollywood, that were from the craps pit, actual craps dealers. And there are a couple you can tell that were not craps dealers and were kind of not as efficient with the stick, not as efficient with entering the data. So there's a little bit of a delay extra in that case. But one huge benefit of having those real dealers in is that when you roll the dice, they verbally call out the number, right? Where not such a huge thing if you're the shooter because you can kind of see it even though there's some bad reflections. But if you're playing at the stations, you might not be able to read what the dice are. And if there's delays of you know, getting the readout of what was entered into the system, you could be sitting there for a little bit at your station. So if they're calling out the, the dice rolls verbally, that's a huge benefit. So having those real dealers 
that are actually, you know, craps dealers, it's a benefit when they call out those dice numbers. Or they can just train the new dealers to call out the dice. One repeated distraction that constantly ha kept happening is that there's a, a space between the table and, you know, the ring of players that are just sitting and watching. So when you get these new people walking through the casino, they're clueless kind of the craps or whatever, they just kind of walk in and walk right up to the table, which is understandable in, in a way. So they, keep, they just walk up to the table while you're playing, but they're now standing in front of all the other people betting on the game, and now they're in the view of the cameras and everything. It, it's, it's just kind of funny. Um, once you start playing and then you realize people are clueless when they come in. So if that's you, don't walk all the way up to the table when you first get there if there's actually somebody playing. Kind of chill back at the player station so you don't become one of those distractions and have the, the dealer or the pit boss have to come to you. Please get out of our area. Only one shooter at a time, right? Again, this being the first week and the first location running with the software, uh, running with this setup uh, at Planet Hollywood, they uh, are running the trial software version. And, you know, at some point, I'm sure soon, they'll, they'll ramp it up and upgrade to a more permanent or any bug fixes that they might have, um, which you'll definitely have, right? Another update that they will likely have, I was told, is that the newer versions of the software, there'll be a way to uh, tip the dealer. Now, and there's other versions of games that there was a button, so I don't know if it's gonna be similar to that, if you'll actually be able to play you know, dealer tips out on numbers and bets and place bets for them. We'll see. Um, for now, Planet Hollywood, and, and um, you're able, they actually had their tip Now, if you're really superstitious, this might be a little bit more difficult because we got more new players coming in, people new to the game and just new to the how to play this particular flavor of the game. But there's so many times I'd be sitting there playing or trying to shoot and then you have people trying to explain the game to their buddies, all good, right? But then, of course, you always have the ones talking, okay, now just don't roll the seven, or we're, we're trying to get these numbers, but not the seven. All you hear is seven. 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 So on the actual playing surface, like I mentioned before, it's kind of a microfiber, typical uh, table feel. Um, on the table, there is one place where there's like a speed bump. On, you, you wouldn't even notice unless you're actually looking for it. Um, but there's like a little speed bump on the, the table surface in between the uh, prop box area in the center and like in between the prop box and the, your half of the table. So maybe like a third, third way into the, the table length. There's a little speed bump just to avoid those, those people trying to cheat and doing, you know, sliding the dice across. So there is one speed bump. There you go. Also with this new setup for the table, for me, I always notice when it, the, the table surface is dirty. I see the hairs, I see little things that have dropped on. Okay, whatever. Uh, just observing, I guess, that way, but kind of anal and OCD, I don't know. But I know being that there's only one station where everybody's shooting from and everybody comes up, it's gonna get dirty on that table surface quicker than on a normal table. So, I mean, luckily they'll probably clean at the end of the day and stuff. But if you're like me, things might catch your eye and little speckles and stuff dropped right on the, that table surface throughout the day. So that's just something to be aware of. With the shorter table, um, you know, they gotta keep the, the rules a little bit more stricter on the shooting. So if you don't hit both dice against that back wall, you will get that warning really quick. And I believe you only get the one warning after that. If you don't hit both dice on that wall, the back wall, then you'll just get a no roll. In my 10 plus hours of playing, um, there were two major 
hiccups in the system, two errors that came up. And both of them happened during the dealer switch. So there were dealer errors that may be more reoccurring in this type of game. The first one happened coincidentally right when there was a dealer switch. I was shooting and I just made my point. So uh, the puck should have got, because now the dealer has to actually control the alive puck as well as the puck that's in the game system where there was a previous, uh, you know, hybrid craps game where everything was digital. So the dealer didn't have to deal with the puck. Here on this, this uh, inner block, uh, stadium live craps version, that's one of the few things that the dealer does have to do on the table surface. You know, they're not dealing with any chips, but they do have to move the puck. And so during this dealer swap, she didn't move the puck position. So when the other dealer came in, things were kind of out of sync. The, the pucks didn't match for, for a turn or so. And then we realized what was going on and, and they adjusted the live puck to what was on our computer screens. But that was something that popped up. And the second error that I encountered, I, was, I wasn't the shooter at the time, but the, the roll got uh, thrown dealer entered the number into the screen but at the same time the next dealer was swapping in so she, i guess she just kind of rushed through okay that was this number you know it's a 415 okay yeah yeah, yeah. Con confirmations okay and they swapped but the problem was is the number wasn't a 415 it was a 516 and because she hurried through confirmed that it was still that what she was entering, then pretty much hosed everything and the, weren't able to just manually do an override. Um, there's some key fobs that the pit boss can come in and try to zap, and, but maybe it's because it's a new system. No one knew how to like enter into the proper mode and reset things and undo and that kind of thing. Or maybe it's just gambling licensing you know you can't be able to undo certain things so anyway 20 minutes the game got shut down just complete halt and eventually we just had to like have the game a hard stop with just kind of faking the system and then re everybody's bets come down had to kind of start all over in a sense no one lost money but in the role of things, it just everything got stopped. So it, it, more dealer errors can, can uh, come up while playing in this digital system. So here's the process of what goes down on a typical shot. Dealer's up at the table. All his bets are done. The timer goes down. Dealer slides the dice over. And the same kind of thing as a normal table. You get your five dice. Deal, uh, the shooter takes their two of choice. Dealer takes the remaining dice back. Dealer, I mean, uh, shooter tosses the dice, hits both dice on the back wall. Here's where things kind of get interactive with the dealer. So the dealer then enters in the number on their little terminal. Then they slide the dice over and there's a little ring a light little lit ring on the table on, the, on a specific spot at the top center position. They move the dice over there. It changes colors and the table's basically telling the dealer, yes, I see both dice are in this circle. And then they get a, a confirmation button that pops back up on their terminal. They have to say, is this the actual number that you entered? You verify it. They confirm it again. And then that number is displayed to everybody's machines. So you can imagine that there's gonna be some delay of times for that whole process to go through. Now, once that goes through, people get paid, the bets are open again, and there's 30 second timer for the bets. If the shooter is just confused or takes longer than that 30 seconds to do their bets, the dealer has a button there that can extend the time a little bit longer. They also have a button on for the dealer.
telling, you know, giving the heads up, final warning kind of thing that the timer is almost about to run out. And anyway, so the, the player can do their bets and it starts over, counter goes to zero, dealer can slide that dice back out to the shooter and you get to toss the dice again. Okay, so my top five for pros and cons for this stadium live craps. So con number five is when you're betting, there is no do we don't. You can't hedge your bets uh, in certain ways, uh, in the obvious ways. So if you are playing a don't pass line bet, you can't put the same, well, you can't do any value, uh, on that number that the puck is set on. So you can't play both sides of that bet. Similar to, to the rules in bubble craps, you know, some of them, the companies will block you from being able to do that anyway. But the same thing here, no do we don'ts. Con number four for live craps is the lucky shooter bet is basically an anti-repeater bet. So if we look at the, the actual rules of what the lucky shooter side bet is, now basically at the bottom here, you can bet a one to five dollars. That's, that's how the bet goes. And you have to put it at the beginning on the come out roll um, of when the shooter is about to throw that. You can't do it midway during the roll. So you say you throw a dollar out there, right? On the come out person's starting their roll. Now, they establish the point. So if you're working from the bottom here, say they establish the point, they hit three different place numbers. So say they hit the four, then they hit the five, then they hit the six, and say your, your, your come out roll, the puck was set for 10, right? So now you've hit four completely different place, you know, four completely different box numbers. Now that's where you would win here on the payout for five to one. Now say the same thing. Um, he sets the point, it's at 10, okay? Now they roll a four, then a five, then a six, then an eight. So now they've had four hits, you know, beyond setting the point. Now it pays 15 to one, okay, kind of cool. Say they kept going and instead of four, maybe now they actually hit that nine as well. So they, the point was the 10, then they hit a four, then a five, then a six, then an eight, then a nine. So now they got five numbers after the, establishing the point, 150 to one. Okay, cool. But, okay, now even take it all the way. Here's where the tricky part comes in and the, the, uh, the icky part of this whole lucky shooter, the main, there's a couple different ways to lose. One, you hit, you know, a seven during uh, midway of the, sh the roll. Okay, fine. Every, you know, specialty bets normally do that. But here, you set, you establish that point at any time that you roll any of those same numbers. So say you, you, you set the point for 10, you roll a four, cool. You roll a five, cool. Now, say you roll another four, you hit a four again, boom, you lost. That whole lucky shooter is now done. It resets. So, <laughs> in actuality, you have to hit all these different numbers separately, never repeating. Now, this, this puts the luck in lucky. So, if you're a, a shooter, or even if you're a random roller, that like that finds a trend and seems to hit the same, you know, repeat numbers, you know, say you throw a five, a nine, then back a five and a seven, a uh, six, and then a five again. If you throw repeat numbers, you're going to lose this bet. But anyway, the very, say you, we already covered 150 to one. If you establish the point that you hit five of these different numbers, the other five numbers, you get 151. Now, say you set that point, you hit all those five numbers. This is this top row where it says all hits. You already have at least 150 to one. But then if in that order, you now hit your point again after that, that's a thousand to one, thousand four one, sorry. 
Now, that, that's kind of cool if it hit, but that means you hit all those different numbers, then hit the point again without ever hitting one of those numbers a second time. So, I mean, I think, I think you're okay if you rolled a horn number. Um, that might not negatively affect you. Uh, unless it was a come out, then you might lose. I think that resets and loses uh, on a come out roll as well. But yeah, so if it's a if you're a repeat roller, do not. I would not do that lucky shooter bet because if you hit one number twice, that resets. That resets that whole bet. So that's why that's number four on my cons list. Number three on the cons list is you must shoot from the end. If you like, typically on a normal table, you might like stick left one or two or stick right one or two, you know, next to the stick man. And you kind of, maybe you like throwing it to the side, a pendulum swing kind of thing. That's not gonna happen here. Um, you have, to, it's only eight feet long. You have to shoot from the far end. Now, just a side note, if you are a, a side shooter, and that's, that's where I fall into, I, I literally stood you know, at the end of the table and from the deck shooting and still just threw it out to the side, but I'm standing sideways to the table. So you do what you gotta do, right? So there it is. My number three is you have to shoot from the far end only. My number two on the cons list is that there is such a time delay for, you know, you're waiting for the, the bets to go down. So you have to wait the 30 seconds or something. So the, the, the dealer can't just slide you the dice right away if you're ready. That's kind of the bummer. Gotta wait for that timer. So gotta wait for the dice, 30 seconds. And that's just at this one location at Planet Hollywood. It might differ from casino to casino. And my number one on the cons list for this stadium live craps is that there's the ongoing repeating time delay of when the dice are actually thrown for the time that everyone gets to know what number actually rolled. If the dealer did not call out verbally what the roll was, there can literally be 15 seconds just sitting there Everybody at their station waiting, waiting, and the dealer look at the number, enters it in his little iPad thing, and then hits enter. Then they slide the dice over to the little circle. It lights up, goes to green. Then his screen changes, and he has to confirm that that number that he entered is what it is. And then they have to reconfirm. That could take, there's been a few times it took way too long because there's newer dealers. They don't even, they obviously weren't dice dealers using two hands on the stick, moving it. You know, then they knock the dice over. They have to reset, sometimes they just reach and reset it instead of, they just don't have the control of the stick to know how to flip dice back to the normal number, set it, verify. Now everybody else gets to find out what the number is and if they won or lost. And so it's, it's cool if the dealer, you know, verbally calls out the number. As the shooter, you might have buddies and you might call it out or throw signs up of what the numbers are to help out. It makes it more fun, interactive that way. But uh, yeah, time delay on finding out what numbers were actually rolled. That's my number one con. All right, my top five pros for the Stadium Live Craps. Let's go with number five, is that in a future version, not in the current one, but in the future version, they are implementing for your bets, player betting presets. Now what they'll likely do is have uh, one or two uh, presets that you can save. So if you have a big uh, spread of betting, maybe you play across, you know, $10 on, on all the, the box numbers, and maybe you throw out a, a field bet with a couple horn bets on the come out. And you don't wanna to have to do that, maybe you can't do that in the limited time uh, every time there's a come out roll or something like that. And then you can save these, these player presets and be able to call them up on just hitting the button, boom, it, it comes up. 
So that uh, feature, that option is supposed to be implemented in a, in a future version. So that'll be cool. That way you can maybe have one setup for your dark side on random rollers, right? And then when you go to shoot, you have another preset which has a, a huge, bigger spread, more aggressive. And then you can instantly just go back and forth and you don't have to worry about, oh, did I get all my right bets? Uh, it'll be so cool, even better than at the live tables where you still have to put out the amount. So player presets, my number five pro. Number four on the pro side is no distraction from the cocktail waitress. If you're the shooter, you're kind of up and away, so you're not in the normal path of, of the cocktail waitress making her rounds. Cocktail waitress comes to the player sitting down, that's all good, right? It's kind of back further. Not a huge distraction if you're the shooter. So number four on my list of pros is no distraction from cocktail waitress. My number three for the pro side is when you get to play, it is much more comfortable sitting and playing at these terminals. Um, as a craps player for me, I'm always on my feet. Man, I'm bouncing between casino to casino. I never get to sit down. I don't sit at the restaurants. I don't sit at the slot machines. So I'm always on my feet all day. So finally, there's a game. You know, I, I used to have to go bubble craps just to sit down and play a little bit. So it's cool that my main game that I go and sit down at and play for a long, you know, extended period of time can actually be a comfortable sit down game. So that's kind of cool. And that's why it makes my number three on the pros. Making number two on my pros list is on the field bet. Two pays double, but the 12 pays triple. You're not gonna find that on any regular table in Las Vegas, that's for sure. Making number one on my pros list for the Stadium Live Craps is the energy level can be so much bigger and more involved and just overpowering than even a, a normal craps table, but definitely uh, much more interaction between players and the dealer um, just because of the layout. It's spread out across. You have players much further spread out, but in visual line of, of sight, everybody's interacting with their screens, but then looking around, everybody's thinking the same things. You have the dealer who's up there with the shooter, so they're more likely to interact with you and not just you know stand there and ignore you like other versions of craps games, hybrid games was, was encountering sometimes. But anyway, when you have a hot roller, the, the crowd, everybody getting involved, even just barely clapping and cheering a little bit, it sounds so much bigger because the space is taking up more room. People are spread out. The footprint on the, the, the area is a lot larger. So the energy coming from this stadium version of live craps, and plus, even not in the pit itself, but you got people on a hot roll winning on stations you know, over there by the, the other dealers of the other stadium games, you know, the other stations, they're still betting on you. They're cheering. So the energy level is, can be so much huger than some of these other games. So that's why that is my number one on the pros list for the stadium live craps. Okay, so you might ask, Toothpick Ted, you just spent over 10 hours playing during the first week that the Interblock Stadium Live Craps game was turned on and running at Planet Hollywood. How did you do? Like anything else, it took a little time, get familiar with the layout, the game, how the process is. They're still learning the process in all, you know, teaching the dealers. So being the first week, it's kind of a little bumpy, but it's all fun. That was part of the excitement anyway, right? So I, me personally, up and down, had some decent roles, you know, mathematical average, um, playing both sides, dark and light, depending if I felt the, the dealer is just a clueless person and, you know, if they kept throwing the dice off the table or something, it's like, okay, I'm betting the don'ts on you. So first day, third day, and then day number five. I went there on day number five again and, you know, 
definitely the seats are filling out. Uh, middle of the day, now they're at ten dollar minimums, but players are people are starting to sit down and play a lot more. First time I went up, 0.7 out. Like, oh damn, go back to my station. I, whatever, have fun, keep going. Then I had some friends from earlier in the week show up. And uh, come cheer me on. And that was right when I was getting to roll again. It's like, all right, cool. So go up to the table. And this time, I went on a monster roll. Had over 30 rolls on my session. So I made, definitely made up for any of my losses from earlier. Definitely got a good feeling for the table. And, you know, I've had other rolls during the week. I had a 19 roll. I had... Maybe uh, one or two other ones that were in the high teens, but definitely hit this 30 roll, made up for everything else, and cashed out for a nice little chunk of change. So I think I, I kind of got a good vibe for the table now. All right, so that's a basic overview of this new inner block stadium live craps that's kind of spreading across Nevada. Now, right now is only at Planet Hollywood up and running. They do have another location that was set up that when I'm wandering around casinos at the Palazzo. And they had a cool, even larger footprint area, um, you know, of the craps table, also with the other dealer tables of the other games. Um, but they had about 30 stations in a circle around that, that area. I don't know if that's all positions are able to be shooters because Planet Hollywood had 12 immediate stations around the, the craps table and then any other stations can bet, but they couldn't be the shooter. So only 12. So at least that's kind of like a real craps table in a sense that that's the amount of people you may have to wait through to get the dice again. But at Plazo, the way they have it set up, there's possibly 30 stations in that circle. So I don't know if you throw the dice and have to wait possibly all 30 if it's crowded. That's ah, really going to be a bummer. But anyway, Plazos, I heard rumors supposed to open up and start running sometime later in this month, the end of April 2022. So we'll see how that goes. And then if they have newer software, some of the, the, the game rules might change from what I've expressed and what I've encountered at Planet Hollywood. Then they may, after that, expand to other locations around Vegas. I've heard rumor that they already have this system. People said they already had this system back east across the United States. So if that's true, maybe they got some software updates that are different now that they're trying to put in these systems. And they got older ones from places that already have setups going so we'll see um maybe yeah whether or not they even have that those tables or the exact uh game there could have been misunderstandings whatever so for inner block and their stadium setups what some of them are able to do uh some casinos will let you do is you actually get to play multiple games so you could sit at one of these uh stadium seatings and Pick roulette, have that game as part of your screen, and the other half of your screen could be playing, you know, that Baccarat game. And so you're playing both because they have the live dealers in, in the front there, and then you're watching on the big screen, got it on your display. So that might be cool. I think the version of, at the Palazzo may let you do multiple. So maybe they'll let you do live craps and bubble craps, you know, live craps and roulette. We'll see. Planet Hollywood was just, at least at the stations right around the craps table, was purely focused for that craps table. All right, so thanks again for checking out this video. And I want to hear what kind of experiences you have uh, when you go play it. I totally recommend at least watching it, if, if not even just sitting down and play a little bit. And if not, go shoot. It, it's kind of cool. It's a little different. So uh, whether you're a uh, uh, practiced shooter or if you're just a random roller go huck them and chuck them go up there this is toothpick ted and i'll see you at the tables